I'd like to begin by expressing my deep appreciation for your continued support of the David C. Driscoll Center and attending tonight. As my mother has a, a way of saying, my cup runneth over. Thank you for coming out. We celebrate our 14th year, and we are honored to present the work of the noted African-American artist, Kara Walker. Before we be begin, I would like to acknowledge the organizers of this collection of Walker's work, Jordan Snitzer from the Museum of Art, University of Oregon, and Eugene. I would also like to express my deep appreciation to the uh, Driscoll Center staff and students for another job well done. I'd like to point out our board of advisors that are present and like to acknowledge the, uh, the service and commitment from Ruby McZeer and Sharon Hostin, who are concluding their service on our board. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge our new board members, Dr. Renee Atter and Professor Jefferson Penner, Penter, who's joining us. Also, a special thanks to our Driscoll Center ambassadors. You'll see them with a little badge on. They will answer some of your questions. I prepped them on the Kara Walker Show. But something I also want to point out, we had an exhibition here uh, prior to this one, the Robert Blackburn Passages, which was an extremely important exhibition that I believe placed Bob Blackburn in the canon, as he should have been, with this illustrated catalog. That show is now at King Caliber Gallery in New York City. That show was planned and scheduled to be returned to its lenders, but we were able to raise the funds to do that. Contributors like Mel Hardy and Juanita and others, Pat Waters and others contributed the money necessary to take that show to New York and extend our reach from the Driscoll Center to New York City. I'd like to acknowledge their contributions. Thank you. Also, the continued support of our devoted supporters like uh, the Mitchell family, who's always here and always supportive and always makes a contribution to the Driscoll Center. As he said today, everyone has a log to bring to the pile. Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Ruth Zambara from the Director of Consortium of Race, Gender, and Ethnicity for collaborating on our programming. Now I'd like to bring up uh, Dr. Bonnie Deal. I'm going to say a few words after introducing Bonnie, uh, Dr. Uh, Deal about the exhibition to give you some context from my perspective. But first, let me bring up Dr. Deal to greet you. First thing I want to say is, wow, <laughs> wow. Uh, I want to welcome you on behalf of the College of Arts and Humanities, and I want to thank you for coming out this evening. It's really gratifying to see such a large crowd here. And for those of you who are regulars and who come regularly, I want to thank you for your persistent and faithful support of what we are doing here. Driscoll, the Driscoll Center, with its mission of preserving, disseminating, and studying the rich heritage of African American art and culture, is an essential part of the college's mission to prepare students to become global problem solvers and creative innovators. One of the ways we do that um, is that the Driscoll Center helps us achieve this by exposing students and our entire community to the many ways African Americans tell our stories through visual media, material culture, and archival ephemera. So this is the first week of African American History Month, and it's appropriate that we are here and can honor Carter G. Woodson's legacy about the need for and importance of African American history. All of the exhibitions and the archives here provide African American perspectives on these subjects. The exhibit that we are surrounded by tonight does this in a manner that is both bold and challenging, that is as bold and challenging as it is creative and path-breaking. Kara Walker makes us cringe and laugh at the same time. Her work is controversial because it boldly forces us to look at images that take us to a place many of us would prefer not to see, remember, or imagine. But I'm not the art historian, and I'm not saying, I'm not commenting more on the work. Others will do that much better. I'm excited that the Driscoll Center has brought this work to our campus and our community 
because it provides us opportunities to engage these challenges, to debate and discuss them. You can't prepare people to become global problem solvers and creative innovators without these kinds of discussions. Carter G. Woodson knew that well, and that is why we remember him as we celebrate the opening of this exhibition tonight. I want to thank Curly Holton, Dorit, is somewhere probably running around doing things, and the staff of the Driscoll Center, as well as Dr. Driscoll for his inspiration and for bringing this work to our campus. Enjoy. Thank you again for coming out. So I have a few remarks about Kara Walker, hopefully to put it in context for you, her work. And then uh, the Grand Maestro, Dr. Driscoll, will come up and make some closing remarks. Walker first came to the attention of the art world in 1994 with her mural Gone, an historical romance of a civil war as it occurred between the dusty thighs of a young negress and her heart. This unusual cut paper silhouette mural depicted highly sexualized images of the South and slavery instantly caught the attention of the art world. At the age of 27, she became the second youngest recipient of the coveted James, John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation Genius Award. Walker currently lives in New York City, where she has been a professor of visual arts at the MFA program at Columbia University since 2001. She is frequently identified as one of the most important black artists working today. Her artistic influences include Andy Warhol, and his omnivorous eye and moral distance, and Robert Cole Scott, who inserted cartoonist Dixie sharecroppers into his version of Vincent van Gogh's Dutch peasant cottages. Walker has become known for her pan uh, panoramic friezes of cut paper silhouettes, usually black figures against a white wall, which present her take on the history of American slavery and racism through violent, unsettling imagery. Her nightmares, yet fantas fantastical images, incorporate a cinematic feel. Some of her image could be, images could be considered grotesque, graphically depicting violence, rape, and de degradation of blacks in the South. Perhaps her most recognized work to date remains the black paper silhouettes, and it has been said that Walker's silhouette images work to bridge unfinished folklore in the antebellum South, raising identity and gender issues for African American women in particular. Now for me, Kara Walker's work extends far beyond the immediate visceral reaction to her depictions of her subject matter. Her work speaks to an inherent dilemma artists face between their intent and the consequently what those intentions then have to do with you and I, the viewer. To understand the role that artists' intentions play, let's consider the work of a number of other artists throughout history whose work or who themselves were considered controversial. Perhaps this will offer greater insight into the artistic motives of Kara Walker. Francisco Goya, considered the father of modern art, used symbols in his work to emphasize emotional elements of his subject. One of his most famous painting, and controversial black painting, Saturn, Saturn devouring his son, presents a giant eating his son, tearing off the son's head with his teeth, gruesome, appalling, yet it has been suggested that the giant represented the incompetent and arrogant Fr Ferdinand VII of Spain, who sacrificed his subjects for his royal lust for power. Pablo Picasso, another, perhaps the most famous artist to have lived, in 1937, painted Gornica, a work of art considered his most powerful political statement. Gornica was painted as an immediate reaction to the Nazis' devastating bombing practices on the Basque town of Gornica during the Spanish Civil War. Gornica shows the tragedy of war and the suffering it inflicts upon individuals, particularly innocent civilians. This work gained a monumental status, becoming a perpetual reminder of the tragedies of war, an anti-war symbol, and the embodiment of peace. Gornica was displayed around the world in a brief tour to wide acclaim and helped bring the Spanish Civil War to the world's attention. The controversy about whether or not this particular painting could really be an effective political tool never leaves the painting. Picasso himself later on said that a painting is not for decorating apartments, it has much broader social importance. What these artists share with Kerr Walker is a deliberate attempt to provoke an emotional reaction, which in turn forces the viewer to think more deeply about a subject. In other words, each artist intended to tap into the same deeply provocative emotional response as a conscious strategy. 
Walker's work has an agenda, and her choice of median and her dramatic execution utilizes the stigmatic stereotypes of Mammy, Sapphire, and the Savage, are choreographed to jolt, anger, and shock, and perhaps for some to tantalize. Kara Walker makes no apology for her choice of black thematic subject matter. Instead, she embraces the notion of a black self trapped in a world of demeaning stereotypes. The result is a set of fantastical, historically situated narratives that seek to remind the viewer of the human debasement and shame of slavery. Perhaps this is an effort to redeem her own psyche from the legacy of slavery, and perhaps to redeem ours as well. At the same time, Walker has been criticized for using these stereotypes that are seen as demeaning of black people and pandering to the white art world. We all know this is material that be can, can be dangerous in the public space, regardless of who you are. Recently, while attending an exhibition titled Represent at the Philadelphia Art Museum, celebrating 200 years of collecting African-American art, they had one of the pieces we have in our show as well by Kara Walker. And the show label stated that Kara Walker's work does not in any way capture the real horrors of slavery and racism. A month ago in Mexico City, a renowned journalist told me she loved Kara Walker's work because as a feminist, the work speaks to women as victims of oppression. At the same time, Kara Walker's work and her provocative content harvest from the pain, the shame, and despair of her subject. Her work rests on the inhumanity of one race, of an enslaved group because of the color of their skin, the color that is the black of Kara Walker's cameos. Kara Walker's work is about racism, which produces human objectification, which in turn is a fertile field that produced a Kara Walker. This exhibition and her work pulls a scab off a deep and festering wound. I believe those who seek freedom and those who believe in equality are made stronger and more complete and more honest by confronting these issues and dilemmas of Walker's work, the Grand Maestro. Thank you. Good evening and welcome again to the Driscoll Center. Professor Halton has given you the context for what you need to be thinking about, what you need to digest from these works on these walls here. And I'm just here simply to give closing remarks and thank you for your patronage, your curiosity, as a number of people have said to me, I'm just curious to see what it's all about. Well, now you see what it's all about. And when one person said to me, why Kara Walker? And I said, why not? Anything that will move the dialogue of interaction, cultural interaction, in the sense that it gets us started thinking about our history, about our nation as a whole. That is something that is a part of the educational experience that we should all have and participate in. So we are delighted that Carl Walker's exhibition is here. And on a personal note, being a southerner, we had certain expressions we would say down south. Now, I have known Kyle Walker since she was knee high to a duck. <laughs> Her father, an accomplished artist, spent a good bit of time in California, then came back to the south, to Georgia, and was chairman of the art department at Georgia State University in Atlanta for a number of years. And I'm able to say, because I'm old, 
that we've probably had no exhibitions in this facility where I have not interacted with some of the artists in some manner. The last, of course, being Bob Blackburn. And so I have known Kara and her family over the years, had a visit from the entire family, her mother Gwen, Larry, her father, her then husband Klaus, and her daughter Octavia in Maine 12 years ago. And they came and toured my garden, my studio. At that time, Klaus was teaching jewelry. He's a jewelry, jewelry artist. He was teaching jewelry over at the Maine College of Art in Portland. And so that kind of interaction of intimate asking of questions was very important for me. And I asked her about this question of history and the way she looks at it. She sees it differently from most people. And that's what artists are supposed to do. They're not supposed to copy each other. And she said, I'm deconstructing history. And that she's doing. She's looked at the salient episodes of American history. And as both Dean Bonnie Dill and Professor Holton said, you know, it's not always pleasant, particularly slavery and a large percentage of our population still in denial about slavery. So that she has taken it upon herself to look at various strains of American history and give us her own personal interpretation is something worthy of our visual understanding. So I am pleased that you have responded by coming to see this exhibition and I hope the students who are here and I'm just delighted to see so many students. I'm not gonna ask if you were told you had to come. <laughs> As you know, when I was teaching, I said you had to come. You had to do a paper. And I've seen, you know, students over the years, they come back to me and they said, I am so happy you made me write a paper on that artist. So again, thank you so much for coming and I would say to you, continue to enjoy the exhibition. If you can't see all you want to see tonight, come back again and again and again. We welcome you with open arms. Thank you very much.